والصلاة ربي وسلامه ورحمته وبركاته على ذاك النبي الكريم نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه الطيبين الطاهرين وسلم التسليم الكثير أما بعد As we continue in Balugh al-Maram and as we discuss we said that we're going to start on in what is pertaining to affairs that are connected with Ramadan. And for that reason, we constantly, or we ask the sisters to bring Kitab al-Siyam, the book of, of fasting. But we'll be discussing, in accordance with that, within that lesson, things which are connected with a woman's hayd, or a woman's ments, or the woman's, as they call it, al-istihada. Istihada, which we'll discuss, inshallah. Why we say, and why am I connecting and con- combining both lessons? Because a woman's mens, as we know, is a reason for a woman not fasting. And she needs to know what is a mens and what is not a mens to order for her to know whether or not she should be fasting or not. For now, we're going to start, inshallah. For tell, um, that's okay. Hmm. In regards to siyam. We'll be discussing and doing Kitab al-Siyam, but I'll be connecting it with another book. In regards to the brothers, I'll be doing something slightly different in Siyam. In regards to the women, I'm going to basically discuss matters that are pertaining to a woman's monthly cycle or her mints, while discussing the affairs of a fasting. So if everyone do not forget next week to bring their book of Balugh al-Maram, which is in regards to Kitab al-Siyam which we'll discuss insha'Allah, and we'll be doing that until Ramadan starts. We'll try to finish everything so we can be completely ready for Ramadan. But before we actually start discussing the matter at hand, I wanted to discuss a little bit about a topic in which a lot of our brothers and sisters, some have a lack of knowledge in this regard, in which a lot of, due to the fact that we have a lot of factors that plays a part in the offset, if you want to say, or the, if you want to say, for lack of better words, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, a person's or a person's body in general being off balance, and there's a lot of factors that causes this type of misbalance or this balance that's not what they call tawazun, al mustaqir al mustawa tawazun. Like basically for the chemical balance or the balance of a person's hormones being in, in, in a normal, normal way, you'll find that it causes a woman's mints to be thrown off track and not to be normal. So a person will know, what, when is it time for me to fast? When do I have to fast? Is this blood considered a mints? Is it not considered a mints? What do I do? I'm sure a lot of women want to know that because when Ramadan comes, our, bro- our sisters are the ones who face this type of problem. So then we want to discuss and talk about this, inshallah, and it will be something beneficial for them. <clears throat> so just to discuss a... Here it is. Just to discuss about the woman's mints. Excuse me, everyone. I'm sorry. Here it is. Now, as far as in regards to the woman's mints, as al fasl awal, what is the meaning of al hayd? Al hayd, al hayd, as we know, is a mints. What is the hikmah? If you'll find that Allah Taala when He created, created the woman. He, he made this matter something of which every bint or men from bani, from Banat Adam, from all the daughters from the daughters of Adam, or the children of Adam, as far as the, the women, excuse me, that all of them have this. It's the overall hukum. As far as those affairs that are very nadir, as they call them, very, like they're mil, minute or minor things that might happen that goes outside the norm, then there's no hukum for that. 
rather we know the hukum is for the al-aghlab. What is the vast majority of what takes place for women is that they have a mince. There are some certain minor matters in certain parts of the world where something rare happens, it rarely happens, something that's, that's, that's extremely strange, what goes out of what we normally are accustomed to seeing and knowing and being acclimated towards. But however, the hukum is for al-aghlab. And we take in consideration what is the vast majority. What is known is that a woman, when she matures at a certain point in her life, she will have a mince. So, as we know, al hayd is the type of blood that it takes place to the female. In accordance to what takes place around her of, according to her circumstances, her age, her body chemistry, whatever. That it can happen without any reason. In a certain time, as we know. And we know that it's an, a natural blood that comes out or emanates or exits out from the woman's body. And it, it can be either due to a sickness or it could be either due to a jurh, a wound, or something that might have died, or because of birth of a child. For verily we know the mens is different according to the circumstance and the condition of the female and the environment she's in and what type of uh, circumstances she's in or, or environment or place or time depending on the heat, the climate, to the end of it. As all of it is different. As women in this regard are different in which it's known and it's established. You'll find that Allah Ta'ala has instilled in a certain wisdom. The wisdom of why the woman has a mince. Like I said, keep in mind, our sisters, we're going to tie this in with siyam. Everything's going to get tied in with fasting. A person would say, how is this connected with fasting? Because if a woman is on her mince, she does not have to fast. She does not have to fast, nor does she have to pray, as we know. And if a woman is not on her mints, then of course she has to fast and she has to pray. As far as pregnancy and, and breastfeeding, we'll discuss that in a minute of time, inshallah. But this is the origin. This is the also. The origin is if a woman does not have her mints, then she has to what? Pray and fast. But there's certain circumstances where we know that, that women are tested with where they do not truly know. The blood might come out and it's, like, and it's a type of yellowish color or darkish color or a type of kudra, uh, as they say in the Arabic language, which is like a discoloration. What do I do? Is it immense? Is it not immense? Do I fast? Do I not fast? What do I do? So in regards to what we discuss, what we're saying now, Allah Ta'ala put in the woman's immense hikmah. Why? What is the wisdom behind a mints? Because when the actual fetus is in the womb of the mother, there's no way that the fetus can actually attain that nutrient of how a full-grown human, be human being attains nutrients from outside the body. He says, وَلَا يُمْكَنْ لِأَرْحْمِ الْخَلْقِ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصِلَ إِلَى إِلَيْهِ شَيْءٍ مِنْ الْغِذَاءِ And also likewise, the most merciful of creation meaning from the creation, meaning the mother, can also not give nutrients to the fetus directly by that nutrients that she, what, that she eats and consumes directly. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it a way to give full nourishment to the body, meaning to the female. Is those ifrazat damawiyya yatagadha bihal jineen fi batani umma. He says that those type of blood excretions in which the fetus gains nutrients in the, in the womb of the, mo of the mother. He says, Basat without her what? Without her, or how any necessity of eating, or for example, digesting directly, un unless, like we said, you'll find that the actual fetus, it stores nutrients in it. And it, it, it nourishes the what? It nourishes the fetus, or it gives nourishment to the fetus. So it's stored. So you'll find that woman, even though she might not eat in certain 
certain stages, there's there's still nourishment going inside the fetus. There's nourishment being given to the fetus by, the we know, the umbilical cord. So what I'm saying is, is, is all the kalam of the, of the, of the speech of Ahl al-ilm saying this. By the way, the umbilical cord. He says that we know that blood flows through it, and through its veins, so the fetus can gain nutrients by it. So look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the ments, so it could be a reason to give nutrients to the body, or give nutrients to the fetus, excuse me, to the fetus, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made this as a way for what? Has made this as a way, or made this as a reason, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had what? Instilled inside every woman, for, so, so the actual fetus can what? Attain nutrients, so it can form properly, and it can grow properly. That's the reason why we know when a woman becomes pregnant, in most cases, what happens? Usually the signs of a woman becoming pregnant is that her what? Her mint stops. That's usually the, the sign. And usually, of course, there's certain instances and rare, rare cases that a woman, her mints will continue even after she becomes pregnant. But that's something rare. But however, likewise the same thing with the breastfeeding. But however, that's something rare. But in most cases, usually the sign that a woman is pregnant is when her, her mints, that it stops. So the hikmah of the woman having a mints, you'll find, like we said, it's regards to the to the egg or for the fetus, attaining that nutrients in order for it to what? To form and to grow properly. The next affair which we want to discuss, what is the time of a woman's mints and how long is it? How long is it? So firstly, we want to discuss the age in which a woman's mints, when does it actually happen? When does it occur? And secondly, we want to discuss how long is it? How long is it? So the first thing we say, usually, for sin, the usual age that we know that women usually, not all cases, especially these days and times we live in, but in a lot of cases, you'll find that it comes in the age of ithnate ashara sana, the age of twelve, the age of twelve, all the way up to fifty, all the way up to fifty. We know there are cases where women are, who will have a mince before that, as we know this is well known. But usually this is the case. But if a woman was to now have a mince before that or after that, then that does occur according as we talked about and, just, and said and mentioned a couple of minutes ago, according to her condition, according to this, the environment she's in or the type of climate she's in, all of that varies from place to place. And that could be a reason for her mints being earlier or it might be a reason for her mints being what, everyone? Being later. <clears throat> as you'll find, there's no specific age that Ahl Ilm say that there, there we say in the Shara'ah, in the Kitab and Sunnah, saying that a woman will have a mince, is no specific age. That no anyone from the scholars of, of Ahl Sunnah, that they mention that there's a specific age. He says, You'll find and said, Whereas the hukum will be, when we say the ruling, the ruling in regards to now what is obligatory upon her to perform. Because we know once the mints is a sign from the signs of, of, of puberty. Whereas the, the duties of Islam becomes binding and obligatory upon the person to perform. Such as the prayer, such as fasting, and so on and so forth. So, what is the age? Does it, like we said, what is, this, is there a specific age that we find Kitab and Sunnah? You'll find that Ahl Ilm say what? No. Even though there has been different statements that have been mentioned from Ahl Ilm, but however, nothing is a something that could be, or we could say, has been firmly established. Al <clears throat> Imam, or Sheikh al Islam Taymiyyah, Rahimallah, 
he gave a good a good direction or give a good, good toji or gave a good direct or advice in regards to this. He said the hukum of everything applies ويدور الحكم مع علته ما وما هي العلة العلة هو وجود الدم وعدم الدم. He said that the hukum it plays and it comes into play because of the illa. What is the illa? Of it comes into play due to the reason. What is the reason? The reason is whether the blood is there or not. Basically, just to make it keep it simple. What is the when the blood is there? Once it's there, then the ahkam plays takes into place. It doesn't. It doesn't matter whether she make or she has a mens at seven, eight, nine, ten. Sometimes 14 starts, 16. Once the blood is there, then that's when these ahkam, or these rulings, or these duties, now come into what? Come into practice, or they come into play. So there's no specific age. So the, 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 the hukum or everything d- dwells or goes around, whether or not the blood is there or not. That's it. No more, no less. <clears throat> like we said and discuss these are not only the signs of puberty. As we know, the signs of puberty, what Ahl Ilm mentioned, are three in regards to men, four in regards to women. As far as the men, or as far as the, the boys or the youthful uh, little, little boys, usually number one is, it starts with what? They say that one of the signs of puberty for them, the, the the boy is in as they say in bata sharf al ana the growth of pubic hair the growth of pubic hair in the in the private area or around the private area they call it in bat in batu sharf al ana so that's the first sign of puberty is number one the growth of pubic hair around the private part that's the sign or the, one of the signs of puberty the second one is for as far as a male. It's a wet dream. It's usually the sign of puberty. It's a wet dream. They also say another sign of puberty for the boy is once he's completed 15 years. But does all those signs have to appear or can just one? And that would suffice. One of those signs. If one of those signs take place, then that is the sign that they are ready. For these ahkam, we need to have to pray now, they have to fast now, or to the end of it. The ahkam of the shara' now becomes binding upon them. Also, likewise, the woman, the same thing. A woman, likewise, same thing. If she starts to now have pubic hair, the same thing, pubic hair, and also, wet dream, 15 years old, and we know. The, the, the fourth sign, which is extra, which is, what everyone? Her mints. The mints. Those are the signs that a woman now has come to the age where those ahkam or those duties now are binding upon her to perform. <laughs> Shaykh al-Islam mentions this in, in Majmu' al-Fatawa. He mentions this and says, and I'll just read it quickly. He says, فَمَتَى رَأَتْ الْأُنْثَ الْحَيْدِ فَهِيَ حَائِضٌ وَإِنْ كَانَ دُونَ تِسْعِ سِنِينَ أَوْ فُقَى خَمْسِينَ He says, and once a woman sees the mint, then she's a woman that's mincing. Even if it's, even if it's less than nine years old or more than 50. More than 50. 50. 5 zero. وَذَلِكَ لِأَنَّ أَحْكَامِ الْحَيْدِ he said that is because the ahkam or the rulings in regards to a woman's ments, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the duty binding and the message of Sallallahu only upon when it's there. When it's there. So it doesn't matter whether it starts at seven, doesn't start at eight, nine, it might be different conditions. Because you'll find in the in the shara' and kitab al sunnah that Allah wa ta'ala did not specify. Or Allah Taala did not bring a certain age, which is specific, in which we return back to, or it being a reason for us to what return back to, whereas the ahkam or the duties of the of Kitab al Sunnah will be binding upon the person. And to now say that it's bounded to a specific age 
It needs a delil. It needs a, uh, evidence from Kitab al Sunnah. And there's no delil for that. So we say, firstly, that a person or a woman that's considered ha'ilt, a woman that's mincing, that it starts off with how everyone, do we say that? So just to conclude everything and make it clear, we're not going to conclude everything, but conclude what we're discussing now. Do we say that it's a specific age for it or not? No. We say there's no specific age. So the hukum, the, the rulings or the duties all go around or dwell or they go around depending on whether or not the blood is there or or not. So it doesn't mat- matter whether she starts at eight or nine or some women are late bloomers. Some women or some females are early bloomers. Right, everyone? So that's due to the ayah where Allah Ta'ala says in his book, he says, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْمَحِيدِ He said, they ask you concerning a woman's ments. Say, it is a harm, so stay away from woman, stay away from her during her ments, meaning not to have intimacy where the private part is meeting the other. And we know we'll discuss the meaning of the ayah because we know that the tafsir of it, in which the Prophet ﷺ gave us the interpretation himself, meaning of it is, as we know, is the actual private parts meeting. So now in regards to what is some of this, we can talk about this now. So that's the first delil to show in the ayah. Where Allah Tabriqut Ta'ala says, Surat Al Nisa. I'm sorry, Surat Al Baqarah. Where Allah Tabriqut Ta'ala had made what is prohibited as far as being intimate with his spouse, meaning with the private parts, meaning is that what it relies on one being purified. <clears throat> Her being purified. And once she's in a state of purity, then he can what? Be intimate with her. But we know the opposite, that he cannot be intimate where the private parts meet and they enter each other, or, where, or the private parts meet as long as what? The mince is there. If the mince now is on, then it's incumbent upon him to wait. So you'll find that there's no what specific time that is specified in Kitab al Sunnah in this regard. And there's a lot of ahkam in regards to this. So it's not only intimacy. Even when the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in Sahih Muslim, that it was mentioned that the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Aisha, مُحْرِمَةٌ بِالْعُمْرَةِ إِفْ عَلِي مَا يَفْعَلُ الْحَاجِّ غَيْرَ أَنْ أَنْ لَا تَطُوفِي بِالْبَيْتِ حَتَّى تَطْهُرِي Also we know the narration when it comes to Sahih Muslim that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Aisha that during the time she was in Hajj, this is another delil to show how there's ahkam, there's rulings in regards to a woman's mints. And she has to know whether or not she's mincing, so these ahkam can be applied. Let's just say, for example, during the days where she's making umrah or hajj, and she was in a state of ihram while she was performing umrah. So it happened that she, while she was in the state of ihram, she started to mince. So she asked the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, what does she do in regards to her rituals in umrah? So the Prophet Umrah al Hajj. So the Prophet said to Aisha, If Ali Maya Fa'il al Hajju, Ghayru Allah Tatufi Bil Bait. Hatta Tatuhuri. Do everything that a person had that's performing Hajj does, other than circumambulating around the Kaaba until you are purified. And they said on the day of Yom al Nahar, on the day of slaughtering, she said, I became purified. To the end of the hadith. <clears throat> so it, all this is to show that the mints, the how it can change the state or the ahkam of a woman, rather, depending on whether or not it's there or not. And also in regards to salah and also a siyam, in which inshallah bi love will discuss. Now the last detail in which we'll discuss, inshallah, as, as far as this maqam or this particular matter, 
What about the mints of the hamil, that the woman's pregnant? A person would say, first of all, I know some women would say the mints of a woman is pregnant. How can a woman have a mints if she's pregnant? Some women are probably saying that. Hayd al hamil. So, so, how is that? Because we just mentioned and said what? That usually the sign or the major sign that a woman is pregnant is when her mints stops. And that's what you'll find that Ahl in mention this regard. You'll find that they say, Al Ghalibul Kathir and Al Unza Ida Hamalat in Kata Dim in Kata Dimu Anna. Kali Mam Ahmed Rahimallah in the Ma Tarifu Nisa Al Hamal bin Kita Dim. He says that in most cases, in most cases, that a female, if she becomes pregnant, the blood stops. It cuts off. Just a Imam Ahmed that he mentioned, Rahimallah, that he said, that a woman usually knows that she's pregnant by her blood stopping. That if she becomes pregnant, or the one who's pregnant, if she sees that her blood is there, he says, وَإِذَا رَأَتَ الْحَامَلَ الدَّمْ فَإِنْ كَانَ قَبْلَ الْوَضْعِ بِزَمْنٍ يَسِيرٍ كَالْيَوْمَيْنِ أَوْ الثَّلَاثَةَ معه طلق فهو النفاس وإن كان قبل الوضع بزمن كثير أو قبل الوضع بزمن يسير لكن ليس معه طلق فليس بالنفاس لكن هل يكون حيضا تثبت له أحكام الحيض أن يكون دم فاسد أو دم فاسد لا يحكم له بأحكام الحيض في هذا خلاف بين أهل العلم طيب you're just saying in this regard I want everybody to be very attentive to this he says now, let's just say a woman who's pregnant, she sees blood. She sees blood. He says, Ahl ilm, that they are saying this regard, if it's before she has the baby, by a little small portion of time, meaning close to the end of the pregnancy, right before she gives birth to the child, let's just say by two days or three days, and it accompanies along with it, talq, if it accompanies along with it, how do you call it? Contractions, that's the word I'm looking for. If it accompanies along with it, contractions, then it's considered what? As we'll discuss, it's considered postnatal bleeding of what a woman gets after she gives birth. And that has a hukum, as we know, that has a ruling. Where a woman does not pray, or nor does she what? Nor does she fast. So if it's blood that comes, or it comes out, and if it's by two days, or three days, and it's close to when she's about to give birth to the child, and the company is along with the contractions, then it's considered postnatal bleeding. Now, if it's before the pregnancy, by a long time, he says, or, he says, now what if it's now, before, what if it's blood that takes place before, the pre- before she gives birth, by a long time, let's just say, two months before the actual birth takes place or three months before or let's just say a couple of days before she gets pregnancy but however it doesn't accompany along with it contractions there's no contractions along with it then we say this is not what this is not postnatal bleeding as we'll discuss inshallah is it considered immense or is it considered what they call istihada is it considered istihada? Istihada is called corrupt blood due to a sickness, but it's not immense. That all we're going to discuss, inshallah. Don't worry. So, usually, just to sum up everything, a woman usually has three types of blood that usually what emanates or comes out. Usually, it's either immense. Number one. Immense is number one. Number two is what they call istihada, or what they call demu fasad. Demu fasad, or, or it's a marud. But the second type of blood is the blood as a, as a sickness, but it's not immense, meaning it might be a broke vein or broke vessel that was what? That ruptured inside of her womb or inside of her which caused blood to emanate out of her, but it's not considered immense. It's not considered immense. Whereas if she sees this type of blood, she still has to what? 
pray and she still has to fast. And upon which is al qur rajih, which is the strongest opinion, that she still even can still be intimate. Yes. Not, we know, just, let's just be serious. She still can be intimate, yes. We'll discuss that in a minute, inshallah. The person, we'll discuss that. Don't worry. We'll discuss that. There is a way that, there is a way that the woman can stop it. She can stop her second, that second type of blood. She can stop it. We'll discuss that. Don't, brother, let's, let's be serious. The reason why I'm saying this is because this does happen. Like, I have heard stories, as long as I've been Muslim, a woman will be bleeding for three months straight, or one month straight, two months straight, straight, straight. And she said, I'm going to, he's calling the other. اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آتي محمد الصيد الفضيل وبارك في مقام محمد الذي وعدته طيب the second type of blood that we we said this is called istihada. 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 Which is called another form of which you'll find Ahl Ain call it Demu Fasad. Demu Fasad. Demun, that is a type of sickness. So it's not a mince, it's a sickness. In which you'll find, like we said, stories of women that, for example, they'll, they'll be bleeding for a month straight or two months straight and they won't stop. And we know, and we know that a man, especially if a man is what? Is a strong, is a man that has strong desires. What does he do? He waits three months. You understand, everyone? He waits two months, he has to wait three months, and he has to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And in all this time, it wasn't considered immense at all. It wasn't immense, rather, it was a sickness. So, we'll discuss what Ahl Ilm mentioned in this regard to istihada, but just to keep everyone upon what, we've been, what is important is if a woman is upon istihada, she still has to fast. She still has to fast, and she still prays. <clears throat> and, as, and we know that shaitan himself comes to the vein of a woman and kicks it. As you'll find that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, he says, in order to cause turmoil or to cause some type of affliction or to afflict, afflict some type of grief and cause harm to the to children of Adam, one of the ways shaitan does it is he comes to the woman and he kicks and aggravates the, the, the vessel to make it rupture. And that blood will come out of her. But it's from shaitan. As the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, said, it's a kick. As the Prophet ﷺ even dis- dis- uh, described it, it says, a rakdatun min shaitan. Rakdah means like a kick. 
from shaitan. They kicked the vein and he ruptured it. Which came as a result of it, blood started coming out and, and, and manifesting and emanating from the woman in order to cause her harm. So, the second type of blood is what they call istihada. The third type of blood that we know that comes, comes out from the woman is, is what they call nifas. It's called nifas. Nifas is postnatal bleeding. It comes out usually after the birth, after the birth of the child. And usually it can act and happen before the birth of the child by a small portion of time. It can be either a week or two weeks or even a couple of days or three days or what have you. With the signs that it usually is postnatal bleeding is that it accompanies along with it contractions, what they call talq, talq, which is contractions. So the contractions usually is the sign that the woman is about to give birth and if she sees blood, even though she hasn't given birth yet, usually that is considered demonifes. It's considered postnatal bleeding. It's considered postnatal bleeding. So postnatal bleeding can happen usually after the Pregnancy, or it can happen before the pregnancy, by that time that's close, when she gives birth. Is it clear what I'm saying so far, everyone? Yeah. <clears throat> As we know, the reason, also the important reason why these ahkam needs to be known, is because it's also not only concerning hajj, or siyam, or for example, uh, fasting and praying and also performing hajj and certain ahkam in regards to that, or umrah. But also when a woman is divorced, when she's divorced, we know that everything is based upon a woman's mints, a woman's mints. Also likewise, because we know that al talaq that is incumbent upon a woman to carry out her waiting period as far as her divorce, Depending on her mints. What is, what is something that's circulated in our communities is that if a woman has an irregular mints, she resorts to wor- waiting three months, month, months, three months, one, two, three months, which is incorrect. If as long as a woman has the mints, then she has to what? Rely on the mints, even if her mints is irregular. If she has an immense, she has to rely on the mints for her waiting period in the divorce. So a person will probably ask me, what about a woman, for example, I don't get a mints except once every three months, or once every two months, or once every four months. I only get a mints maybe twice a year. Or the only time that my mints is irregular is if I take these herbs or these medicines or what have you. Then we say to the sister, you still have to what? It's based upon the mints, regardless. Now, if you want to take some type of herbs to speed up or, or, or regulate your mints, then that goes back to you. But the hukum of shara'i, of regards to divorce, relies on the mints. Whether or not it's regular or irregular. Whether or not it's regulated or not. If the mints is there and a woman has it, she cannot resist resort to counting the months of the year, three months as they say, unless she has doesn't have a mints at all. For example, like a little girl. A little girl doesn't get a mints at an early, very early age. Three, four, five, six, usually seven, tall up to a certain age. Or a woman that's elderly. Where she went through menopause and her mints totally stopped. Those type of and or woman that receive a hysterectomy. If a woman receive a hysterectomy, usually she does not get a mints at all. If this is their case, then they count the months. One, two, three. But other than that, the origin is she has to stick to the mints. So if she has a mints, then a woman has to what? Rely upon that. Even if it's irregular. Now a woman, a sister did ask me, well, can I take herbs so I can have it regulated? I say that goes back to you. Absolutely. What's wrong with that? Let's just say you wanted to get your mints back on track. So now my idda period could be 
can be regulated. Well, I have to wait this long time. Okay, fine. You can do that. You can take herbal pills or if they said the medicine that helps to regulate your mints, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. However, still, the hukum of shara'i, the hukum that's in the kitab of sunnah of your divorce and the waiting period relies on the mints, even if it's irregular. Like I said, some sisters will tell me, well, I only get a mints every three months, every three or four months. Well, you, I have to wait that long? And we say yes. Yes. You have to wait that long, yes. As long as the mints is there, the hukum still dwell, go, dwell, uh, revolves around it. Doesn't matter whether it's normal or irregular. But like I said, and I emphasize again, if she wants to take medicine to regulate her mints or some herbs to regulate her mints or what have you, you can do that. Maybe it might make the what? The waiting period shorter. And it can regulate your mints. But however, if it's irregular, then she has to wait for the mints. She has to wait for the mints. And I asked a lot of Ahl Ilm. I remember I asked even Sheikh Arafat Muhammad years ago while I was discussing this. This was about maybe six years ago I was discussing with Sheikh Arafat al Muhammad. Even I asked him, I was discussing this. I said, there's, a, there's widespread amongst our women in, in, in America. He said that the women, if their mints are regular, they want to go to the, count the number of the months. I only got to wait three months. And he said, no, 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 no. He says, do she get a mints? He asked me that. Do she get, does she get a mints? Does she have a mints? I said, yes, but it only come maybe every five months, six months, maybe four months. It depends. He said, no, the hokum depends on the mints, even if it's irregular. As long as she has a mints, she cannot resort to counting the months. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? So I said, well, what if she wants to take medicine to help regulate it? Or take herbs. He said, she can do that. What's wrong with that? Is it clear so far what I'm saying, everyone? <clears throat> but as we know, the hamid of the woman who's pregnant, then her inter period or the divorce period is over once she has the baby. Play. We'll stop here because I didn't even realize the time, how fast time is just flying. Wow. We wanted to give some enlightenment on this because it's important. Not only is it important, but one's or woman's siyam relies on the knowledge of these type of affairs. So that's the reason why I wanted to start, start with it before we actually start talking about siyam. Because like I said, a woman now has to, she has her question whether or not, do I have a mens, does it not? Or, or either, even that dis discoloration that might happen to her. Is it a mens or is it the one of the three categories that we mentioned? Is it a, is it a mens or is it just a, a sickness? Or a nifas, that's easy. But which one, which one of the two is it? Is it a mens or is it not a mens? What is it? Those things are which we'll discuss, inshallah, the details will come inshallah. I'm not sure if some of our sisters know, but some, alhamdulillah, I think a lot of our sisters, some of them know, some of them don't know, but it's something that'll benefit in which, like I said, I want to discuss a bit about, which is very important these days, due to the widespread of ignorance amongst our, our communities and a lot of, of hastiness. Usually you'll find, like we said, you'll find rather Allah Ta'ala allowed these matters is for us to be patient, to teach us patience, especially when a woman's waiting period in regards to her, her idda, it allows a woman and a man to, to, to sit and reflect before they make a fast, hasty move. The problem with us is we always like to make hasty moves, and then we regret it later. We, we regret it later. Make a fast, a fast, hasty move, jump into something, and then we find out that that wasn't what we were looking for. So we always, then we'll regret at the end of the day. But however, if people would be hasty, I mean, weren't, weren't so hasty, and they took their time, whereas they contemplated and they took the advice of Allah to be with the other, whereas she waits, then this would be something helpful, helpful for her in order to rectify her problems or social problems with the husband or, with, or vice versa, the husband with the wife, so they can continue their relationship. But however, it's a shame, but it's these days of times, we, 
We start relationships fast, and we want to get out of it fast. Once things start in a manner that's incorrect, we want to hurry up and get married. Then once something doesn't go our way, we want to jump out and change our clothes real fast too and, and marry somebody else real fast too. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. So, huh? Say it again. I'm sorry. We have to stop? Okay. طيب إن شاء الله. So we'll stop here. هذا هو صلى الله وسلم بارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه. سبحانك اللهم بحمدك. شهد ولا إله إلا أنت. الحمد لله. أستغفرك وأتوب إليك. So don't forget next week, sisters, to bring كتاب الصيام and بلوغ المرام. Don't forget كتاب الصيام. If one has the set, بلوغ 